Hello everybody, welcome back to my Country Sparkles channel. Today we're going to be talking about beehives. Our families decided to get into bees, so we got a beehive off of line and we're going to build it for you today. Now I am not the expert builder person in the family. My husband is here, so I'm going to just kind of turn it over to him and he's going to unbox it for you, show you the pieces, and we're going to kind of build it together. So let's get going. So hey, yeah, as Rachel said, we're getting into bees. I've been researching bees for years. It's been on my bucket list. And uh, you know, this is certainly not gonna be the only bee video that we post. But what we're building today is our first hive. Uh, I have been researching and, and watching, like I said, for a long time. The flow hives, um, if, if you n followed those, right, really a really cool innovation. Um, I would love to get a real flow hive. Um, but just getting started, looking at the cost, I found this great deal. We'll see if it's a great deal or not. That's part of, part of uh, what we'll keep you posted with here. But a Chinese knockoff of the flow hive. So hopped on um, AliExpress, um, ordered this up. You know, it's about a third of the cost of an official flow hive, but it comes with seven of the flow frames, which I believe are in this box. And then we also ordered the kit that comes with um, you know, the whole bee box, so you, know, you get a brood box, a super for the, you know, flow frames to sit in, the inner cover, the roof outer cover, all this stuff. So we're going to see how this is, uh, you know, full disclosure, we're not, this is not a paid, we didn't receive this for free, we like, we bought this for about 300 bucks off AliExpress. We're going to see what it is, if it's really worth it, if it's, uh, you know, decent quality, heck, we may get a few more. If it's uh, not quite what we expect, well, then we'll have one and we'll keep you posted how it works or not. Okay, well, here we are. First apologies, we had some technical difficulties and uh, we lost the audio for the actual unboxing. We, 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 we really tried to show you all the pieces coming out of the box, but it's all laid out here. So let's go through it and talk about what each of these carts are and how they work. So let's start over here with the flow frames. So first off, a little, little quick overview of how the flow frames work, how they release the honey. Um, here at the end, this is the flow, the, the release key. It goes in here and you turn it. And effectively what you're doing is you're lifting or pushing down um, some bars in there that move half of the frames up or down, effectively breaking that honeycomb cell structure. So if you come in close here, you can see on this frame that these ones are all offset. Um, basically, you know, broken offset so that the honey would then flow down to the center of this frame and then come out. Hopefully you can see that come through on the video. Then here at the end, um, you know, if we were harvesting our honey now, we would take one of these tubes. We would have put this in before we uh, broke that open, but then the honey would come right out of this tube. Now, to see what it looks like with a frame that's set up with the proper cell structure, as you come in there, you'll see that these frames are aligned. Um, obviously the bees will need to come in and build some of the connecting comb, you know, so those will actually store and hold the honey. Um, but it's a lot less work for them because a lot of that uh, comb and frame is already built out for them. So, pretty cool. Um, seems like a pretty good quality. Um, again, I don't have a official flow frame to compare to, but uh, we will certainly keep you posted how these work. Now let's talk about real quick the rest of the hardware that came in the box. Um, we've got some, you know, miscellaneous hardware screws to hold the boxes together. We got some knobs and latches here. Um, a flow frame or the, the boxes for a flow hive are a little bit different um, because we have to access uh, some of the things to open it up. So we got a few few pieces here. Roof cap. These are going to be the end pieces um, for for the roof or outer cover. Um, We'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll cover this later if we decide to do it. I can see some uh, possibility of putting some screen over this to keep uh, other predators out. Um, 
we'll see. We got some real fun looking roof panel pieces. Uh, they get a little bit of you know character to them there. We separated out. This is going to be the brood box that goes on the bottom. Um, they're you know nice cedar pieces. Um, it appears that everything has been at least wax dipped or got a little bit of a wax coating. Uh, here's going to be the front and respective back of the honey super where the flow frames are going to sit. And then these are the side panels. And fun fun feature, it's got a window so we can look in there and see the honey and the bees. I'm so excited. Last a couple pieces over here. We have a queen excluder. Um, this one is, I, I don't know for sure, but it feels kind of like a bamboo wood um, and, and got some little bamboo slots in there. So curious to see how well this works. And then we have a screen board and our base down here. So all in all, um, you know, pretty good. Like I said, I'm, I'm happy with the cedar. It's wax coated. Um, the one thing that I, I think I just missed it, and I've got a fly going crazy here um, out here in the shop. They must love the smell of the cedar wood. But one thing that I missed in the uh, description is that it does not come with frames for the brood box. So um, we'll definitely be picking those up later. Um, you know, it should be just a standard Langstroth frame for those. So anyway. I'm going to move things around a little bit here and we're going to show you how these boxes come together. Okay, so we've got everything kind of laid out. I decided I'm going to start with the roof. So I um, wanted to show you real quick here the hardware. So if you want to come in here close, we can show you the hardware. So all these screws and knobs were all what was in that hardware bag. So what you'll see is there are these that are a finer machine thread. They're going to fit in and into the back of these knobs. We're going to use those a little bit later. There's some short wood screws. Those are gonna be for holding on like all these latches and things that hold the windows shut. There's some medium length uh, wood screws. Those are all gonna be for the roof. <coughs> and then there's the longer or the longest wood screws here. And they're gonna be used together to hold together the brood box at the bottom. So let's pivot over here. You can see the roof. We have this laid out. Nothing is screwed yet. Um, you know, it fits together pretty well. And the instructions were, were pretty good, um, to be honest. Um, the, the one is gonna sit flush. The other end here does have a gap under it where a piece will, will fit up into there later. A um, lot of the pieces are pre-drilled, at least into like the outside piece, but I don't see it, you know, pre-drilled into the side pieces. So, you know, we'll just have to make sure that we, we hold things tight and get it where we want. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. I think the only tools that we're gonna be required for this build um, really a screwdriver. I did grab out a rubber mallet. You could use a regular hammer. Um, we'll see how well these pieces fit together. Um, sometimes they're a little bit snug. And and lastly, this is a roofer square. You don't have to have a roofer square. Really, any square piece. I've I've seen people use like a CD container. Just something you you generally want to try to get things, you know, so that it's generally square um, so that everything fits together nicely. So I am not going to bore you with screwing in a bunch of screws. So we'll be right back with this roof part screwed together. Okay, we got the roof all screwed together. It was was pretty easy, about six screws just to hold these outer parts together. Let me show you real quick how I did that and a couple observations. So again, I use my roofing square. You could totally use something else that's, that's you know, got a nice 90 degree angle. Um, I just came in here and I held the roofing square, you know, to each corner as I screwed, you know, them in, uh, you know, worked really well. This end only had one screw. The other end had a screw on each corner. You can see here, screw here and a screw here. One thing I did observe, um, the you know most of the wood is is wax coated. Wood glue does not stick well to wax, um, so I didn't wood glue all the corners. What I did notice though is a couple of these pieces are a little bit loose. They are nailed in. The bees will probably come in with some propolis after they're in their hive, seal it up and make it tight. Um, I don't feel a lot of wax in this on these boards, so I'm actually going to just put it put a little drop of wood glue um, down in in here just to help it 
just kind of for my own uh, mental sanity while I'm here. And then, then we're going to put on the roof pieces. So let me grab a couple of those to show you how these work. So the roof pieces as well are pre-drilled um, here and here. You also want to take note of the orientation of, of the roof pieces. So uh, we're going to, there's a couple pieces like this. We're going to start and they have an angle here and they have this little overlapping notch here. Ultimately, a couple things you want to observe to make sure you do the roof right. Um, pretty easy. Where the screws go, you're going to need to center it the best you can into this wood um, so that you're not splitting it out on either side. The other thing, we're going to line up so this edge, so this ends up being straight up and down. We're going to put that piece you know, to that corner equally here and then make sure that we've got the right direction of the pieces going the other way to create a tight top here. There's going to be a cap that goes on this. That's this piece right here. Ultimately, when we're done, that's going to come in and screw on the top, really to keep any water out. And then we'll come in and we'll slide the next pieces under and under. So we're going to jump ahead to that point, show you what that looks like. Well, we got the roof done, um, as you can see came together. I think it actually looks really good. I'm really excited about the look of this hive and how it's coming together. Couple little observations from putting the roof together though. Um, you'll notice each of the sides here is a little bit different. It's 100% cosmetic. Over here, the piece that they sent, you know, totally closes in and that. The piece on this side is, you know, another piece that could overlap onto another piece and another piece, another piece. Would have been really cool to get both pieces. Again, 100% cosmetic will not impact the function of the hive whatsoever. I also took my time um, to try to really make sure that I had things squared out and laid on good um, so that the, that the panels here are, are pretty square and tight to each other end to end, things like that. Um, and then again, this little roof cap piece went on. From the inside perspective, um, you can see, you know, again, really, really fit together well. I think, again, the bees will probably come in and fill things up nicely. Any cracks or gaps uh, to keep themselves uh, temperature moderated. Um, you know, I think I did pretty good. I only missed on one screw, the very last screw that I put in naturally. Um, that's okay. You know, if you, if you miss a little, miss one or two, it's probably going to be fine functionally. Um, I decided not to go back and fix it. I didn't want to split the wood out even worse. So, so that's the roof. So I'm going to set it aside here and we're going to move on. I decided next to tackle the brood box on the bottom. So these are uh, pieces. The, this is where having a rubber mallet or you know a hammer, if you use a regular hammer, um, be a little bit gentle so you don't mar up your wood. Um, this is going to come in handy. I've seen some kits that fit together really smoothly. No hammer, no force really required. Um, this one a little bit of motivation just to get this one side in but when you're putting this together you want to make sure a couple of things set that out of the way here get your handles make sure that they're both facing the same direction or, or it's going to be really difficult you want those handle notches up um, these notches here where your brew frames are going to sit on make sure they're obviously both up handles up those are up you're going to be good um, you'll notice here that these are um, angled. It's not a triangle, it's just a trapezoid. Now, now you know, need to go back to middle school math um, to remember my shapes, but they're gonna fit in only one direction. So make sure that you get that. The side panels do not have a handle. So, you know, again, you're just gonna have to look at it, figure out which way they go. And then ultimately, again, if I've got that lined up the right way, you can see, you know, the longer edges on this side, Got the longer edge here. We're gonna take that, we're gonna line that up. And this is where we're gonna use a little bit of motivation. I'm gonna lay it up on its end. You can see this edge has already started a little bit. So we're gonna get those put in and we'll put a few screws in and I'll show you where those go right after the break. Okay, well, Update here on the boxes. Here is the brood box. Came together, a um, couple observations. One, there are not countersunk holes 
telling us where to put in the screws. So I have not put the screws in yet. I'll uh, show you here shortly. Um, I'm a little worried about just putting them in and stripping or splitting the wood out. So I'm probably gonna get out my drill and pre-drill some holes to avoid that. Um, I think it would have been a, a cool bonus had they done that already. I understand these finger joints being really tight. They were probably worried about splitting those, hammering them. So a little bit one way or the other, um, we're, we're probably gonna put some screws in there. It came with eight of the long screws. I was also not clear if I should put all eight into this box, the deep for the brood, or if I should put four in here and then jumping over here, right? If I should save four for the honey super with the um, honey frames in it. So neither of them were pre-drilled, but the good news is, again, using our square, the boxes really came out really nice and square. So, you know, that's a plus. Definitely really tight. A couple of the joints probably could have used me getting out some sandpaper or a, like a Dremel uh, to kind of finesse and get them a little bit uh, tighter together. I know I said that a rubber mallet is optional. It is optional, but it's highly recommended. You know, going down to, you know, pick your discount hardware store. We have a Harbor Freight nearby that uh, we pick things up at. You know, for a few bucks for a rubber mallet would really do wonders. If you don't have a rubber mallet, definitely put a towel or something on, um, or even if you have a piece of scrap wood, you know, that, that can take kind of the nicks and bruises from using your regular hammer, your hive is gonna come out a lot prettier and nicer if you, if you do it that way. So um, definitely, do that but it, but it came together nicely okay moving over to the honey super um, it came together really nice as well um, the, the windows on the side I'm really excited for that the joints um, were, were similarly a little bit tight um, especially on this back side you gotta make sure you get that handle facing up what I found to work well was starting with this back piece and then figuring out which of the windows were gonna fit in with that, with that joint. Um, nothing was really marked, but once I kinda got one figured out, trying it around, um, it, it worked well, you know. The windows sit, the, the, the plastic or plexiglass, whatever this is, sits to the inside. Um, I did remove the, you know, window covers so they weren't flopping around, falling out because um, they're definitely not screwed in or secured at this point. When it comes to the front, this top part um, does you know, fit in and, and had to come in carefully on that joint. Be really careful on that. Mine was really tight and I felt like I was um, having to force it and be really careful. Um, there's this piece. We haven't attached the, it'll have a couple knobs on it. Similarly, this top piece here will have a couple knobs on it. Optionally, it comes with screws where you can screw this in. However, if you're gonna use it as a, you know, a flow hive knockoff, then uh, I believe you do not wanna put those screws in because you'll need to remove this to gain access to those keyed slots. Um, because this, this hive will, the frame will sit in like this, right? This will be covering it obviously during the year, but then when you're ready to extract, you would pull this piece off and similar, you'll pull that off to gain access to the honey ports. So we're gonna move ahead here. We're gonna put some hardware, some of the knobs on here. I'm gonna figure out where I want to put those screws and pre-drill some holes and stick those in. We'll show you that. And then really at that point, um, besides a couple little hardware pieces, which we're gonna attach on here for the windows so that you know, they can spin and secure, um, we're really close to done. So I'm excited to see this come together and finished. Okay, well, it's been fun figuring out a few things. This is where the instructions get a little bit vague, but I think we figured it out and hopefully we can share our lessons learned with you in the event that you get one of these to put together. But here it is, um, all put together 
with maybe one exception. So the roof, obviously we talked about that, came together well. I'm gonna set it here out of the way for just a minute. We're gonna kinda go top down and then put it all together. There's this screen board. Again, we talked about how there's not screen on the inside of these, uh, this roof. I think that's a flaw that for a few cents, they absolutely should fix because otherwise you're gonna end up with hornets, wasps, whatever, trying to live up here in the top of your hive. That's gonna be a mess. Nobody's gonna like that. I'm gonna go buy some window screen at the hardware store and staple it to the inside of those holes. It's just, a, it's, it's a little bit of a flaw. But the screen board, right, certainly will help, you know, provide that ventilation and things like that. It has to go on the top and here's why. This little bar has to come out in order to access those uh, top of those flow frames. Now, these knobs without this inner cover will, will butt up into here. And let me show you what that looks like. So if we take that inner cover out, we set our roof on, it's pushing straight on these knobs. So an inner cover is absolutely required of some sort, especially obviously since there's ventilation there or holes there that aren't screened, anything can get in and out. So we're gonna put that screen board on there for that. We're gonna come back to that. These, there were no pre-drilled holes for, for these latches, whether that be the windows or the front here. I think that was okay, right? You know, for, the, for these, I just lined them up so that they were, were straight here so that when they, you know, turn, they provide a little bit of coverage. My only fear with these is that over time, these little pieces of wood may crack out. They're not that thick. Um, it is what it is. We're gonna see how it weathers, we'll report back. You know, it'd be a pretty easy fix if you have like a 3D printer or other pieces of scrap wood, you know. So, so not a big deal. But, you know, definitely holds those window covers in. Um, like it. As far as screws, I decided to split those eight long screws, four on each box. So I put two here on the top of this um, because this, this piece needs to come out. Do not screw this in. You'll regret that later because we're gonna need to access those uh, flow frames later. So I got my drill out and a drill bit and pre-drilled this to avoid any cracking or splitting, um, but pretty, pretty easy there. So let's kind of build this hive up as we go. Set that down. We're gonna take these flow frames. So again, kind of this, uh, the, the bottom hole comes here. That top cap is in. And these are all gonna sit nicely up here. So let's stack those seven in real quick. And we're gonna see how this whole thing looks put together. Just a couple more to go. And last one, a little bit snug, but that's how it should be for bees, right? So those fit in there really well, um, gotta, gotta say that. So we've got that, we'll put this on. Again, the way they've got this, this screen board to go here. Inner cover screen board, whichever they wanna call that. Um, all good there. You know, pretty snug, pretty nice. I really do like the look of this. So now coming over here to the brood box, right? Again, we talked about there's no real instructions for where these screws go. I put, I just decided to take the four that were included, one in, one in each corner, um, coming from the front because the fronts and backs um, come into the sides. So there's no reason the way these finger joints are designed to go from the sides in because it literally cannot physically come apart there. Um, if I were to critique the screws, I would say include six more long screws and I would put one, you know, top and bottom on each of the four corners and then two on the back of the um, honey super. I think one is sufficient up here. I may come through later and, and just add a couple screws, but little critique there. Queen excluder, um, you know, we'll go on there. It, it does fit well, things like that. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll get there. Um, 
one, one thing on the brood box, right? No, we mentioned, I think it, you know, definitely could add just a couple bucks to the cost, but to include the appropriate uh, deep frames here to go onto this box would be a great addition. Uh, the queen excluder, again, I've never seen one of these made out of bamboo, but you know, it, it does fit well, sits there nicely, things like that. There is an entrance reducer. I'm a little bit confused on this one. I'm no expert beekeeper, so you know, take it for what it's worth. Um, it's the width of the box. Maybe that's normal. I expected it to fit inside here, but it, but it simply won't fit. It's not pre-drilled to attach in. Um, so I may attach it that way. That part is a little bit of a mystery to me right now. Um, again, be easy to screw it on. It, it just seemed like wasn't fully thought through. And it's a little bit too tall for the, for, for this width. So again, indicate, you know, my thinking is that it goes on front, but we're gonna set that aside so it doesn't fall off. The bottom board, we showed that, you know, it's a solid bottom board, nothing fancy, but it, but it seems just fine. So let's stack this up, show what it looks like all put together. Um, again, using that square, taking my time, not rushing through. Uh, I think it came out really square, really nice. I'm really excited uh, to see how this works in, you know, in actual harvest uh, come next year. So for sure you can expect an update from us throughout the, the honey season next year. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments what questions you have. If you have any insight that we missed, uh, definitely let us know. But thanks for watching. Well, thank you, Terrence, for showing us how to set up this Flow Hive. I hope that this video was helpful for you, and we will definitely keep you updated throughout the summer next year, especially, and through harvest and how we use this Flow Hive, probably even how we add bees into it. So keep an eye out for those videos. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe down below and also like this video so others can see it. Thanks for joining us today, you guys. Bye.